A shunt reactor is an absorber of reactive power, thus, increasing the energy efficiency of the system. It is the most compact device commonly used for reactive power compensation in long high-voltage transmission lines and in cable systems. The shunt reactor can be directly connected to the power line or to a tertiary winding of a three-winding transformer. The shunt reactor could be permanently connected or switched via a circuit breaker. Shunt reactors are used in high-voltage energy transmission systems to control the voltage during load variations. Depending on the voltage requirement needs, shunt reactors are switched on or off, off to provide reactive power compensation. With increasing load variations in today's system, variable shunt reactors VSR are developed as a means to provide more controllability for grid operators in reactive power management by continuously adjusting the compensation according to the load variation. This technology uses a tap changer, of the same type used in power transformers, to vary the inductance by changing the number of electrical turns in the reactor windings. It is now possible to fine-tune the system voltage and provide regulation capability. The transmission system benefits from improved power quality, optimized grid operation and the possibility of interaction with other regulation devices, such as SVC's static VAR compensators. Shunt reactors inductors are frequently positioned at specific locations along extra high voltage EHV lines, connecting each phase to the neutral point. These reactors absorb reactive power and diminish over voltages during periods of light load conditions. They also mitigate transient over voltages stemming from switching events and lightning, lightning surges. However, shunt reactors can reduce line loadability if they are not removed under full load conditions. In addition to shunt reactors, shunt capacitors are sometimes used to deliver reactive power and increase transmission voltages during heavy load conditions. Different between shunt reactor and power transformer, both shunt reactor and power transformer are same in construction but there are some main differences well such as, shunt reactor has only single winding while power transformer has three windings. Shunt reactor provide lagging bars or it may consume and absorb reactive power to increase the system efficiency while power transformer is meant to be operated to transform voltage i.e. step up or step down, in shunt reactor, primary at ampere. Turns are equal to secondary at due to the absence of other windings while in case of power transformer, primary at is the sum of exciting at and secondary at, shunt reactor may be designed without air or iron core to prevent the hysteresis loss as there are a large amount of magnetizing current as compared. To power trans transformer, shunt reactors are rated in MVR while power transformer rated in Cuvier, shunt reactor are used in high voltage systems and cables network to improve the system efficiency while power transformer are used to transfer the level of voltage. Shunt reactors can be classified in two types according to the fixed or variable nature of the rating, fixed rating SRs, either dry or oil-filled, and variable shunt reactors oil-filled, fixed rating SRs is a traditional technology with no means of regulation. Controllability is ensured by a switched in and out to follow the load variations, which can result in step changes in the system voltage level and induce more stress on system components. This drawback can be mitigated either by the combined use of several smaller SRs, smoothing these step variations and facilitating controllability, or by the use of VSRs that enable a continuous compensation of reactive power through the use of a tap changer to change the inductance of the power line or cable it is connected to. The regulation of a variable reactor is accomplished by a separate regulating winding, or windings, located outside the main winding. winding. The regulating range is limited by the maximum step voltage and voltage range of the tap changer in combination with the specific design concept used. The regulation range typically varies between 50 to 100 percent of rated reactive power, e.g. a VSR with a rating of 150 MVR at 300 kV can today be regulated between 80 MVR and 150 MVR. Typical components of a VSR are one or three phase, iron core with fixed air gap, tap changer, windings, insulation material, insulating oil, bushing, cooling system. VSRs combine the proven design of SRS and tap changers that have been used successfully for decades in power transformers. They are used in high voltage transmission to compensate reactive power and thereby secure voltage stability according to the load variations. VSR enable grid operators to optimize reactive power compensation and benefit from improved voltage control. Main technical benefits of variability compared to a fixed, fixed reactor include the smoothing of the voltage jumps, the flexibility to the load, the ability to interact with an SVC, the possibility of relocation to another part of the grid, and the footprint reduction of a VSR replacing several fixed rating shunt reactors and circuit breakers.
Typical network conditions which favor the application of VSRs are, networks with distributed generation E.G solar, wind, etc. may not always provide full control over their electrical output which may create problems of increased flow of reactive power due to the varying reactive power of both generation and consumption. Strongly varying loads powered through relatively long overhead lines or underground cables. The application of a VSR will relieve the source line from reactive current and thereby mitigate the line losses and improve the voltage quality. Changing networks as additional transmission infrastructure is being installed to improve overall system reliability and support the loss of baseload generating facilities e.g. coal, nuclear. Grids where in and out switching of a fixed shunt reactor will lead to power quality problems in terms of voltage steps. The shunt reactor compensates for the shunt capacitance and the charging current drawn by a transmission line. In the absence of compensation for charging current, the voltage at the receiving end of a long transmission line can exceed the voltage at the sending end by as much as 50%. When reactive power transfer is minimized, indicating a balance of reactive power acro across different network segments, a higher level of active power can be transferred within the network. Consequently, the demand for reactors to control over voltage is highest in weaker power system zones, particularly when the network's short circuit power is relatively low. As the short circuit power of the network increases, the voltage rise diminishes, reducing the necessity for compensation to restrict over voltage. Reactors necessary to achieve a balance of reactive power across different network segments are primarily required in heavily loaded networks, Considering the equivalent circuit, series capacitors reduce the net series impedance of a line, lowering line voltage drops and increasing steady state stability. Disadvantages include the need for automatic protection devices to manage high currents during faults and to re-engage capacitor banks post-fault. The addition of series capacitors can induce Subsynchronous resonance, potentially damaging turbine generator shafts, despite drawbacks, studies show series capacitive compensation can increase long, long line loadability at a fraction of the cost of new transmission, in a compensated line section, NC represents the amount of series capacitive compensation. As a percentage of the positive sequence line impedance, while NL represents the amount of shunt reactive compensation as a percentage of the positive sequence line admittance. Basic operating principle, the electromagnetic principle of a shunt reactor can be explained as follows, initial charging current when a shunt reactor is connected to a power system and voltage is applied, an initial surge of current flows into the reactor. This initial current is called the charging current. It creates a magnetic field around the reactor coil. Induced voltage, the changing current in the reactor coil D by DT generates a changing magnetic field. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, this changing magnetic field induces a voltage in the coil. The induced voltage is proportional to the rate of change of current and is in the opposite direction to the applied voltage. Resultant current, the total current flowing through the reactor is determined by the difference between the applied voltage V and the induced voltage E, divided by the resistance R of the coil. This relationship is described by Ohm's law. Operating principle of shunt reactor summarized, inductive load, when connected to a bus or line, a shunt reactor behaves as an inductive load, drawing current to supply both active and reactive loads. Reactive power cov AR, the reactive component of the current creates a pulsating magnetic flux in the reactor's core. The power required to generate this magnetic flux is known as reactive power, measured in kilovolt amperes reactive cov AR. It is calculated as the product of current, system voltage, and the sine of the phase angle phi between voltage and current. Active power Kw The active component of the current results in resistive losses I square or losses in the reactor, causing heating. The power loss due to this heating is known as active power, measured in kilowatts Kw. Kw. It is calculated as the product of current, system voltage, and the cosine of the phase angle phi between voltage and current. Shunt reactors can be classified based on several factors, including their purpose, design, and construction. Common classifications, based on purpose compensation reactors, these are used to compensate for capacitive reactive power in the system, thereby reducing voltage levels. Filter reactors used in harmonic filtering applications to mitigate harmonics in the system. Neutral grounding reactors connected to the neutral of a transformer or generator to limit ground fault currents. Based on design, air core reactors these have coils wound on a non-magnetic core and are typically used for low voltage applications. 
Iron core reactors, these have coils wound on a laminated iron core, providing higher inductance and are used for higher voltage applications. Based on construction, single-phase reactors consist of a single coil wound on a core and are used in single-phase systems or as part of a three-phase system. Three-phase reactors consists of three coils connected in delta or star configuration and are used in three-phase systems. Based on impedance, fixed reactors have a fixed impedance and are used for steady-state applications. Variable reactors Some oil-immersed reactors are designed to have variable impedance. This allows for adjusting the reactor's impedance to meet varying system requirements, providing flexibility in power system operation. Based on the cooling method, dry-type reactors air-cooled and do not use any liquid cooling. System voltage below 72.5 kV, delta connected, range below 30 MV or so, connected at the tertiary winding of the power transformer, oil-immersed reactors use oil as a coolant for better heat dissipation. System voltage 72.5 kV and above, Star connected with neutral grounding, range 30 to 300 MVR, connected at the terminals of the transmission line, these classifications help in selecting the right type of shunt reactor for specific applications, ensuring efficient and reliable operation of power systems. Reactor earthing, neutral earthing, the neutral of the reactor is grounded to provide a return path for fault or unbalanced currents. This grounding is typically done using two separately treated earth pits to ensure reliable operation. Tank earthing, to prevent the heating of the tank due to eddy currents caused by voltage buildup, the tank's potential is kept at zero by connecting it to the earth grid. This connection helps in dissipating any induced currents effectively. Steel structure earthing, to protect the steel structure from damage due to lightning strikes, the entire steel structure is grounded through an earth grid. This grounding ensures that any lightning-induced currents are safely dissipated into the ground, protecting the structure from harm. Measurement of losses in shunt reactor. The shunt reactor losses should be measured at rated voltage as well as frequency. However, for a shunt reactor with an extremely high voltage type, it may be complex to assemble a high test voltage throughout the measurement of losses. So complexity can be defeat by measuring the measurement losses of the shunt reactor at any voltage lesser as compared with the reactor's system voltage. After that, the loss which is measured can be multiplied through the square of the fraction of rated current and the reactor current to attain the loss at rated voltage and applied reduced test voltage. When the power factor of the shunt reactor is less, then the loss measurement through conventional wattmeter cannot be dependable, as an alternative of bridge technique for measurement may be accepted for better precision. This test cannot separate the measurement losses in different elements of the shunt reactor. To keep away from, the test correction can consequence for a reference temperature and it is preferable to obtain the measurement once the normal temperature of the winding turns into equivalent to the reference temperature.